Well, I've been watching, uh, it might be episode six and seven of The Chosen. I think it could be seven and eight, I'm not sure. But I've, I've watched earlier episodes. So, a good few months back now. Long, probably six months back. More, perhaps. And, uh, do you know, I think uh, certainly the loveliest series I've come across, probably the loveliest film program I've ever watched. I remember as a child I was stirred by El Seed, the film. I think it was Charlton Heston and another great Hollywood actress. I can't remember her name. But... <laughs> And I wasn't remotely on the religious track then or anything, and I was so inspired by the nobility of the character. And more so in this, well now of course I'm older, of course, so much older. Guessing, oh I don't know, 60 years older, half a century anyway. More, definitely more. And uh, I just know in my heart from, you know, my Pentecostal experience and especially the Christian experience here in New Zealand. Gosh, I realise what a blessing New Zealand's been to me. I... I felt watching the chosen the films, the loveliness of the actors doing what they value. They're not all supposedly Christian either, I know that. And many of them are, of course. It probably makes no difference. In a non-spiritual way, I remember playing the part of Mark Antony at the school production. And, uh, you know, we were quoting straight from classical Shakespeare. There was a depth in it that moved me. Ingratitude, more strong than traitor's arms, quite vanquished him in his mantle, muffling up his face, even unto the base of Pompey's statue, great Caesar fell. There was a fool, my countryman, and you and I and all of us fell down, whilst bloody treason flourished over us. Ah, now you weep, and I perceive you feel the dint of pity, Kind souls, these are gracious drops. What? Weep you when you but behold your Caesar's vesture wounded. And so it goes on. And I can remember it still. Isn't that amazing? Sixty years later, more than that. 65 years later, I expect, 64, I don't know. The never-ending story, which is my euphemism for the story of Jesus. Well, you realise the vitality of it when you see it produced in The Chosen. What a blessing. Thank you, Heavenly Dad. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. A story's value is not its historicity. It's in the depth and meaning and blessing that's in 
what it conveys to us. How it moves our heart. In this case, I can't find the words to quite say it, but there's something of the awe and presence, majesty, sheer loveliness, loving kindness of our God. Our Heavenly Dad. Crossed my mind during part of it may have been, you know, as far as episode nine, I'm not sure. It included the woman at the well. I was glad that I got that bit in as well. You just knew from the start, the first glimpse of the character. For me, it's the centerpiece of the Jesus story in many ways. I know I harp on about John 17, of course. But there's something oh, so individual, personal, and rescuing and wonderful about the story of the woman at the well. And the lady who did this particular part in this, The Chosen, gave it more than I could have imagined. Bless you, love. As an actress, I mean, as you are, not just the part you played. Bless you, love. Amazing, they sang at a meeting I was at last night. Just a little house fellowship of about, I don't know, Seven, eight people, something like that. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. We get carried away with partnership romance, you know. It's a practice run, dare I say it. So that you're prepared to cope with the overwhelming glory of loving God as your dearest eternal friend. Wonderful one. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad.